Okay, meeting recording set, that set. Excellent, we'll go ahead and get rolling here. All right, so welcome, uh, hello. Thank you for coming to our webinar today on how to use video to make your course greater. Of course, we call it greater because your courses are already great. We're just gonna try and uh, present some tools to you that you can use to make it even better. Um, I have placed all of you on mute because of the large number of people in the room. I know over 500 people RSVP'd for this, so that's impressive. Um, I can't really count real quick how many are here, but that's still a lot of people. Uh, that said, we are going to have plenty of time for question and answer at the end, but if there's anything that pops up along the way, please make sure to place your question in the chat. Um, and I can't emphasize this enough. Oh, I thought I had that up on a slide. I guess I don't. Uh, please make sure to send your chat to everyone, not just private. Um, we have Scott Guile, okay. our marketing manager for Launchpad on the line. He's going to be monitoring the chat for me while we roll through this presentation. Um, and of course, there will be a recording sent out afterwards, and we'll have all sorts of helpful information in a follow-up email. Um, so with that, what we're going to be looking at today are video assignments within Launchpad. It's one specific feature that we have available in our Launchpad product. And Launchpad is what we call our course space that's filled with resources that are customized for many of our textbooks. Now, if this word launchpad is a completely brand new word to you, don't worry, we'll talk with you afterwards and give you information on how you can get access to launchpad for your particular book um, or class that you're teaching. Um, and we can also make sure we get you time to, set, uh, time to spend with the appropriate specialist. But with that, so that I'm not just a random mystery person talking at you, my name is Heather Halter, and I'm the Digital Solutions Specialist for many different disciplines in the humanities, as you can see on the screen. Um, of course, we have specialists for uh, all of our other disciplines as well. Um, but basically, me and the other specialists provide training and pedagogical support for instructors using our Launchpad products. And I'm just typing one more thing in the chat real quick before we move along. Okay, and I hear someone unmuted. Let me just scroll through real quick, make sure we're not getting any weird background sounds here. No, nope, everyone looks fine. All right, so before coming to Macmillan, I actually taught public speaking at the college level at several universities throughout Central Florida. Um, and I incorporated many different types of media into my course. And actually, even going all the way back to grad school, I wrote my thesis in using online media both in and out of the classroom. So the subject that we're looking at today it's something that's been an interest of mine for years. You know, I used online media while I was teaching, and now in my role at Macmillan, I actually get to help instructors use it themselves. So today, we're going to look at how to use video to make your course greater. Specifically, we're gonna take a look at Macmillan's video assignment tool in Launchpad. We'll take a look at some specific best practices for how to use these video assignments in your course. And of course, most importantly, how to actually build these video assignments. Now, before I get ahead of myself, what is a video assignment? Let me exit out of my PowerPoint here and have one up on the screen so that you can have an idea of what this looks like. Basically, a video assignment allows you or your student to virtually, uh, to upload virtually any video that's saved on your computer, uh, any video you can find on YouTube, or any publisher provided videos that may be in Launchpad, uh, depending on which subject you're teaching. Uh, our, obviously, our offerings within Launchpad vary depending on the particular book or discipline. Uh, you may have seen something similar to this in your own school's LMS or maybe in another place. 
Um, but I think personally, ours is the most easy to use functionality. Now, as I stated previously, I used to teach uh, public speaking, and I actually used an older iteration of these video tools back when we were calling it speech class instead of Launchpad. And I would have my online students record themselves presenting their speech, and they would upload it. And I could then add comments that are actually time-based, as we're kind of seeing on the screen right now, and fill out a rubric to grade their speech as well. Now, of course, that's just one use for these video tools. We're going to take a look at lots of other uses today as well. But these tools proved to be invaluable to me. Before this, my students would record their speech, upload it to YouTube, and I would type my feedback in a Word document, which was not really the most constructive way to give feedback. So there really is a lot of value in these tools. Um, what we've got on the screen right now is I actually, following in the idea of pulling a video from YouTube, I have in my sample assignment here pulled in one of my all-time favorite TED Talks. And in my sample section here, I want my students to post comments that relate to this video. As we can see, of course, the video shows up on the left here. And then we have these three tabs up top. Of course, the assignment just shows the general instructions. Then we have the comments tab, and I'll go ahead and hit play here. And as I said, these are time-based comments. We can see the time in the upper corner here. And additionally, when we reach a certain point in the video where there's a comment associated with it, you can see that it sort of highlights and then scrolls through as well. And we'll talk about the implications for this kind of activity shortly. But again, they are time-based. So as you're watching the video you've uploaded here, all you have to do is hit Add Comment. The video automatically pauses so you don't lose your place. You can go ahead and type your comment in the box. Hit Post. And of course now your comment is linked to that particular spot in the video. Um, one other cool feature though, also with adding comments, and I know a lot of our competing products don't offer this, you can actually also place a comment with a time range as well. We've got these little sliding tools up here. So that if you have a comment that doesn't reply to just one particular point in the video, maybe it covers a whole section of it, you can always do that. And of course, we do also have the rubric tab is this last button. Now this is where, as an instructor, uh, when I used this, I could come in and grade my student speeches almost just like I would my on-campus students. Uh, we do have pre-built rubrics and the option to build from scratch or customize our pre-built rubrics. But then basically once you set that up, you just come in here and click on the grade that you want to assign. The math is done for you in the upper corner here. So we really like to make this as easy for you to use as possible. I'm gonna go ahead and exit out of this um, and switch back to my PowerPoint slides real quick. What I wanna take a look at now are going to be some best practices for how specifically you can use these video tools in your course. And the first thing I wanna take a look at is what we call an instructor submitted video. Um, and I want to add right now, if you have any ideas that are already kind of starting to stir around in your head of how you could use this in your class, go ahead and share those in the chat and hopefully we'll have a minute to read some of those out or distribute them because of course, you know, teaching is a very collaborative environment. We can always learn a lot from each other. But an instructor submitted video would be something like that TED Talk where I provided a video that I want my students to watch. There's a lot of different ways that we can use this besides just giving them a TED Talk. Um, first of all, it can be a great way to share information with your class. Probably one of the most common uses of this uh, would be to record and upload any lectures. You know, if you record yourself presenting in class, 
you can upload this here so that your students can either maybe rewatch it. Uh, if they miss class that day, they can always watch your lecture there. Um, or you could also use it for an online or a hybrid class, you know, maybe those, uh, those courses where you don't get to meet with your students face to face. You can provide them with as close to a live lecture as possible. You could also, um, you can upload any video file that you have saved on your computer. Uh, so one other option could be to take screencasts for directions and tutorials. You know, maybe if you're teaching a very kind of technically based class, you can record um, sort of a how to use video. You know, if you have to walk students through how to use a particular type of software, maybe they've got a detailed assignment they need to do. You can read through the instructions and maybe demonstrate for them how to do those items as you're speaking about them. You can also upload animations or any related media you have for your course. Um, a quick little shout out to one of our authors. I was actually told that Michelle Schuster, one of our biology authors, creates her own animations to go along with her classes, and she uploads her animations using this video assignment feature. And as a side note, she says it's very easy to use. So it's not just coming from me, it actually has real world experience there. Additionally, as I hinted at earlier, you can import any video on YouTube. So anything that's out there that you want to share with your students, you can. You can also set up these assignments to require students to leave comments and or to fill out the rubric. Maybe you want to upload a sample presentation. You know, if your students are going to be doing some sort of project for the end of the semester or any point throughout the class, you could upload a sample version of what that might look like. You could also upload a video of a related lecture. You know, maybe you have a speech from an important figure in your field that you want to share with your students. Um, I know personally some of our economics instructors pull in videos from MRU, and those prove to be very helpful. You could also use this for what I like to call a live action or a time-stamped discussion board, uh, where you can sort of continue the discussion outside of class. This could work well in conjunction with those recorded lectures. Or you can almost turn it into a build your own video quiz. You can post a comment at some point throughout the video and then require that your students respond after watching the video. So lots of important ways that you can use these video tools in your own course. Now of course, you can also have your students submit videos as well. And we just provide a easy, secure place for students to store videos. And this is personally how I used to use this in public speaking quite a bit. They can upload a video for you, the instructor, to view and grade. Um, you know, maybe you have them do some sort of project presentation uh, where they record themselves instead of presenting actually in person, uh, which quite frankly is an important skill nowadays. A lot of communication is happening online and getting them used to doing things in an online slash asynchronous format may be helpful. You could also use these as a self-reflect assignment. Students can add comments to their own video. So maybe you want to use this for some sort of end of the semester assessment where you're having a student reflect over their work over the past semester. Or maybe you could have an assignment where students have to find a video to embed. Uh, one example of this that I used to use with my students is I would have them go find uh, a video clip of a movie that has a really strong opening, uh, opening sequence, to highlight the importance of using a proper introduction in your speech. And you can also use these for peer review assignments. Students can, um, you know, upload a video and then have their classmates add feedback to the video. Uh, you could use this maybe for group assignments, or sort of branching off of that find a video to embed that we just mentioned, you can have your classmates give feedback to any of your students. 
And of course, you can mix and match these options. You can choose to use any of these options individually or use any combination of all of these. Um, and we've got a lot of comments going on in the chat, so make sure to check that out. A lot of really good ideas. Uh, we'll pull some of these and send them in a follow-up email so that you guys can have uh, some good information. But what I want to go ahead and move on to now is how to actually build these assignments, because it doesn't do a lot of good uh, if you want to use these but don't know how to do it. So let me get back into Launchpad here. Now again, for those of you who are already using this, this screen is going to look familiar. This is basically the home page for Launchpad. And we'll walk through now how to build these video assignments. Um, and something I want to mention that we're going to be using in a minute, if you have any ideas of a video that you might potentially want to show your students, go ahead and put that in the chat now because we'll be using that in just a minute. But from the Launchpad homepage, to build your video assignment, you're going to click this Add New button. And you'll see this pop up. Go ahead and select Video Assignment. Now what we're going to do is we're going to walk through these four steps up top here. The first window is your basic information. Um, so video for class. You can include any directions here. We hit save and then move on to assignments. On this page, very basic, we just go ahead and select our due date. You can choose the amount of points you want this to be worth um, and put this into a video assignment category if you'd like. We hit assign. And then this Settings tab is the most important option here. Uh, our first option is to set up a different set of assignment type. You can either have this be private, where the student submits the video to an instructor only, or you can have a shared assignment, where the student will submit a video and instructors and peers will be able to see it. Then we have, who do you want to submit the video? We have the option to have this a student submitted video, which of course is what we looked at just a minute ago. Again, you can require that your students add a certain amount of comments to their peers' videos and or add comments to their own videos. And one thing that's really handy about this particular feature is if you have this as an a graded assignment for your students, they will actually be prompted if they don't leave the minimum number of comments. Uh, we do also have the rubric feature, but we're going to touch on that next, as that's our last button up top there. And of course, we also have the instructor submitted video. So this would be something that you set up for your students to watch. This could be those uh, lecture captures or screencasts, uh, YouTube videos, whatever it may be. And of course, we can still require that your students add X amount of comments and use a rubric. And lastly, we have who can see student comments. You can either have it so that when a student posts, everyone in the class can see their comments, or only the instructor and the submitting student can see the comments. And this would be helpful on those sort of self-reflective activities. Or who can see the instructor comments? If you're using this as sort of a discussion board, you want to make sure to select everyone in the class. If you're having this as sort of a, uh, like how I used to use this with my students uploading their speeches, you want to select only instructor and submitting students. So that way you can give sort of critical feedback without everyone in the class hearing it. We hit save, and then we move on to our last button here, the rubric button. If you want to add a rubric, and of course this is optional, you don't have to have this, hit add a rubric, 
And as you can see, we actually provide you with several pre-made examples. Um, admittedly, a lot of these are public speaking focused, but you could certainly use these if your students are submitting any sort of presentation. Or of course, you, uh, and you can select these and edit them. Or you can also choose to build your own from scratch. But I'm going to go ahead and just edit this existing one here. Every category, uh, we have a competency and a criterion. And everything in here is fully editable. The competency is sort of just a general category. And then the criterion are all of the items that make up that category. Now, anything with a trash can next to it can be deleted. And anything with a pencil next to it can be edited. So we can have, uh, we can change the text in here. We can add criterion here. And of course, we can also always add a competency as well. That'll show up down at the bottom here. And we just edit. I'm going to go ahead and save this, and then we will select it and add to the assignment. Then, just to double check, come back to the Settings tab and make sure to check Use Rubric. We'll hit Done Editing, and it does always prompt you to save, which is always a good thing. And I'm going to back out for a minute. We can see now on the Launchpad homepage that our video assignment is showing up right here. Now, of course, I'm in the instructor version right now, but the student version is almost identical. They're going to log into Launchpad and see their video assignment right here. We'll go ahead and open it. And because this is an instructor submitted video, you're going to see this option to add a file. But obviously, if your students were submitting something, they would see that button. We'll go to Add File. Now, we have a couple of different options here. You can choose to upload a video that you have saved on your computer. We support pretty much every file type here. You can see on the screen right there. Um, and file sizes can be as large as 600 megabytes, which is actually a pretty good size. And there's no limit on the number of videos that you can upload. Um, and of course, this can be anything saved on your computer, recorded lecture, graphics. It also allows for music files as well. So if you have just audio, even without video, it will still take it. Uh, this video library I touch on just briefly. Some launch pads have videos already loaded in them. Uh, we're looking at a psychology one right now. So these are all videos that psychology users have available to them. If your launch pad has these, you can pull these in and use them for the commenting and rubric features. But what I want to show is the embed right here. And let me see if anyone came up with a good idea for a potential video to embed here. Um, I'm not really seeing anything in here. These are all sort of um, other comments. Let me go ahead and pull in any video we can find on TED here. Well, this could be interesting for any of our English instructors who may be on here or any languages teachers. All we have to do is copy the URL here and paste it into Launchpad, agree to the terms. We hit Submit. And this is all happening in real time right now. So as you can see, that uploaded really quickly. We see a thumbnail to show our video has been uploaded. And then it's available for review. So we can come press play. And then, of course, we add our comments. We can choose to make these a long time. And then fill out our rubric. So that, in a nutshell, is our video assignment feature in Launchpad. And today we looked at some ways that you can use this to make your course greater. 
I do want to thank you for your time and please keep your eye out for a follow up email. We will send out a recording um, in case if you want to watch this again or if you ran into some technical difficulties and had to leave. We'll also send you with all sorts of information that will help you get set up with Launchpad, how to start using these. Um, and of course, if you're already using Launchpad, these tools are actually available to you to start using right now. And if you're not in Launchpad, we'll help you get set up with that. So with that, I'm going to call it quits on my talking for now, and I'll turn it over to the chat to see if there's um, any questions that need to be answered. And Scott, I'll go ahead and take you off mute if there's something that you feel should be read aloud right now. Let me find you on the list here. There we go. Okay, and I'm taking hey, myself off of mute too. Hello, thank you folks. You've kept me very busy. Um, and I'm doing my best to keep up on the chat. Great group. Um, one thing that I mentioned on chat, when Heather grabbed that video, I think many of us saw that there was a 30 second ad at the beginning. She could have actually played it through that ad, grabbed the URL at that time and skipped the ad. So you actually can skip Mm -hmm. videos that are that you can skip the ad part of the videos simply by letting the video play to the part where the ad's over. Yeah, and advertisements you, you do not come in. So, that's the good. At that time. Mm -hmm. so um other than that, I that's all I had to say aloud there I guess there was some questions. I've been increasing number of questions about LMSs such as Blackboard, Canvas, G two L. We have deep integration with those three. We are working on integration with Moodle and Sakai. Uh, you don't have to integrate to use Launchpad in an LMS. There are other options, but if that's your preference, we do have that. Yeah, um, and I want to address some questions that just came into the chat. Um, I got a question, does Launchpad cost money? Um, and it varies from title to title, so I can't really make a sweeping answer to that. But uh, we can certainly work with your sales rep to figure out um, what the cost would be for yours. Um, I also saw something about a length of the video. There's no limit to how long the video is. It's all about the size. So as long as the size of the video file is under that uh, 600 megabytes, doesn't matter how long it is. Um, and there was one other private one I thought I saw. There, there were some questions about terms of use. Uh, the terms of use are generally just you, you agreeing that you didn't steal intellectual property if are uh, posting it up there. It, it's a it's legalese that, that cover that you know this isn't you have permission to use this video because you're educators. You have permission essentially to use just about anything you're going to find on YouTube as long as you've deemed it appropriate. Uh, we as a publisher couldn't put up a library of YouTube stuff if we don't own it, but we can give you tools to use that stuff, and in an educational setting, you are allowed to use that. And uh, just, just to I hopefully clarify a little in terms of use. I'm not a lawyer, so I probably didn't do a great job. <laughs> okay, and I'm seeing a couple of other questions regarding what you can pull in. Um, Right now, we really only have the functionality to pull in videos from YouTube. You could always try to pull it from something else, um, but we can't guarantee the success of that. Um, and I also see a lot of questions about um, integration again. Um, we've got Moodle. Moodle integration is coming up sometime within the next year. Um, and Canvas, Scott, we already offer integration for Canvas. Is that correct? Correct. Deep integration okay. for Canvas, Desire to Learn, or Brightspace. I, I'm not sure if they've changed their name or not. They seem to be vacillating. Mm -hmm. And um, Blackboard. So the three most prevalent ones, and we're working on the two most prevalent ones. After that, Moodle and Sakai, and hope those, hope those will come online sometime before the beginning of next fall. It will not mm -hmm. be for spring. Our goal was spring, but it, it, I just can't confidently promise that we're going to have deep integration with Moodle and Sakai for spring. Uh, That's kind of again, how I've been pitching it too. <laughs> you, you don't need to, do, to use deep integration to use an LMS and Launchpad. It is one option. Correct. 
but you don't, I mean, you don't have to have a deep integration. There's ways, easy ways to export grades, but they're, they're, we'd be happy, thrilled to talk to anyone about all of this stuff. And again, look for our follow-up email. It's going to have links to training, information, that kind of stuff. And, and we'd love to hear more from all of you. Absolutely. Um, and one oh, last question. I, I, I do have a question. Uh, it, it's either the, the thread of questions on other sources of things that you can invest. Right, right now, YouTube is the place that is very easy to embed. I don't. I haven't tried Vimeo. It may or may not work. I, I can't promise anything on that. Uh, the, the the thing about YouTube is it's not really much of a limitation. If any video you find, you could easily put on YouTube and then use it from there. Yes, it does add a step to the process. But um, since there's so much material on YouTube. And it's so easy to work with. Right now, YouTube's the only thing that I want to say. 100%, anything you find on YouTube is as easy as Heather just showed to make an assignment out of. And, and yes, you can upload stuff that you have locally. If you have something on your computer, absolutely you can upload. It doesn't have to go to YouTube first. If you have a file that you've saved in just about any file type, and it's your file on your local uh, computer, you can use that as well and create an assignment out of that. And in addition, there, is, there are video libraries with a number of the text, and, they, and there'll be ever-growing video libraries with mm -hmm. these texts, including things like our author speaking, especially how, you know, like Paul Krugman or, uh, you know, Tyler Cowen, Steve Moore, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, people who are very prominent, but not just those either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. One question I do want to address, just because it's something that I bring up a lot in my one-on-one -on -one trainings. Uh, there's a question, is Cisco WebEx an external host that Macmillan uses for webinars? And yes, I do like to address that. Uh, WebEx is an external website. It has no real relationship with Macmillan other than the fact that we use it for webinars. So if you had any technical difficulties with WebEx, I do say that, you know, don't let it reflect poorly on us. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, our relationship with them is they're a vendor to us. Yep, exactly. And they've been very good at some things, and sometimes, for whatever reason, some people run into all kinds of issues trying to get it to run, and I always feel badly when that happens. Mm -hmm. But um, by and large, they've been good. Yep, agreed. Um, so I I think we've addressed pretty much everything. I'm glad to hang out for a couple of minutes if there are any other questions. Otherwise, I thank you for your time and just keep your eye out for our follow-up email. Thank you so much, folks. It was a great group. I really enjoyed all the chat. And Fiona, I see your question. I'm just trying to find your name on the list so I can reply just to you. There we go.